This is Raina Creel with Purpose and Passion. I'm so excited today because I'm about to take you guys back memory lane for myself. So there's people that impact my life that left an imprint, right? And so today I have Miss Chan in the building that left an imprint on me. She is the wardrobe guru, designer of House of Cinderella, and she's also an author. But before we go into her story. I want to share a little bit of story about how I met Miss Chan. Okay. So everybody knows that I was doing gang intervention back in the nineties and I was in charge of the first celebrity basketball game at Morningside High School in Inglewood War. That's my alma mater, giving back to the youth and the community. And so back then you could call this uh, Actors Guild, get the information and Doggies Angels, I was a super fan. So out of the, the girl group, something about Chan stand out with me, like her flows, everything and her confidence and the way she was. And so I said, oh my God, I need to get her information. I sent a letter out with a letterhead for Peace Colors and we booked them. And that was the day that I will say, I met Chan face to face. I was so excited. I was shaking in my boots, <laughs> but I was so normal, like, hi. <laughs> so thank you Chan for coming with to Lux Media. You are welcome. <laughs> you blew my mind with that. So yeah. and. I did meet you at um, Morningside High, so thank you for reaching out to us and booking us. You know what I mean? That was cool. Well, it was an honor because a fan, come on now, you know? Okay, okay. And I, so I fan support. <laughs> I remember the CD and everything, but right. I forgot the CD for you to sign it. Oh, wow. You should have yes. said something. Do you know I, I know. still have posters? Okay, I need I one. will get you one. I need one from my mayor office because you know I'm running for mayor of Inglewood this year. Well, I'm going to vote for you this thank year. Thank you so much. <laughs> so you let me know what I need to do when I got you. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I definitely be will be using utilizing you for, um, you know how sometimes they have like fashion week. Mm -hmm. I would love to create something in Inglewood mm -hmm. for the you know young adults and for the youth for Fashion Week in Inglewood, where we can collaborate Lady, and make it happen. Let's go. Let's awesome, do it. awesome. Let's Thank do you it. so much. Yes. So take our viewers through your journey of where your parents are from, where mm -hmm. were you born and raised? Mm -hmm. Well, I am from Los Angeles. Originally, I'm from the South. My mom came when my mom and dad separated mm -hmm. and she came to Los Angeles on a Greyhound bus. Remember those things? Yes. <laughs> With $90 in her pocket and she just had a dream. She wanted a better life for her kids. So we came here and, you know, in elementary school, I knew I saw something different because my mom, she loved fashion. Yes. Her cousins, they used to sew and whatnot. So I seen all these things as a kid and just everything about fashion, mm -hmm. I loved it. And cut to, like, I love words. I love wordplay. I love reading. Yes. My mom, she used to do crossword puzzles all the time. So it's ironic that I would be a rapper. Yes. And um, let me see. I met Easy e first. Okay, okay. So out of high school, I just loved NWA because okay. like I said, I'm from the South. My grandmother, mm -hmm. she cussed like a sailor and so do I. <laughs> so when I heard fuck the police and you know, <laughs> niggas with attitude, excuse me. But yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I like this. I gotta meet. And I became a big fan of yes. NWA. And so I met Easy first. And Easy was working on this is when N.W.A. broke up and mm -hmm. he was working on a song called Only If You Want It. And Tretch from Naughty By Nature wrote the yes. song. So they were shooting a video. And me and my homegirl from Compton, we was like, we going up to the video. So we go up to Easy es video and we get in the trailer. Now, Easy knows me by now from multiple run ins. Yeah. You know, so he knows who I am. So we in the trailer and the, the subject of rapping came up and Easy e was like, Chan can't rap. And so my homegirl was like, Chan, go on and bust a freestyle. So I did a freestyle. I had this rap. I wish I remembered it because I would say it, but I know it was called You Don't Want to See Me. Ooh. And he was like, 
he looked. He was like, come to my office Monday. I'm going to sign you. I'm going to give you a record deal. Yeah. And then I that Monday, I got a call. It was from um, this chick named Shari Henry. You may know her. Mm -hmm. She used to head ASCAP. And she was like, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. Easy yes. wants to sign you. Come to the studio. And then I think that was the gateway for everything. We all know Easy ended up passing. But yes. I was in a group called GBM. Mm-hmm which was called Gangsta Bitch Mentality. And that was also with Silky Fine, the yeah, one who sung Silky Romeo Fine. and Juliet. Yeah. So me and her and two other girls, was he formed a group. But again, he ended up passing. And so that didn't take place. Yes. But however, I walked away with so much knowledge. Mm -hmm. Easy E always wrote stuff down. Yes. You know, he was very practical and he was just, you know, he, he, he had an agenda every day. You would always see him write down. And even on his deathbed, mm -hmm. his wish was to put us out, Bone Thugs and Harmony, above the law. And I think it was oh, somebody wow. else on that list. You know what I mean? So I just said I had to keep on rapping because this was the first person who took a chance on me yes. and believed in me, you know? And so, you know, throughout the years, I would meet Snoop. And I met him in like these ciphers, you know, yes. back in the day, like people can hop on the internet right now and rap and yes. get a career. It depends on the views and the likes, but no, we had to go into the trenches. Yes. You get in a circle. Cypher. What you got? Yes. And I used to be that girl who would get in them circles with the corrupts, the snoops, the Warren G's, and, <laughs> and I would just do my the thing, gangsta, gangsta. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And you know, Snoop just became a fan, and it's 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 kind of cocky for me to say he became a fan of me because he's Snoop Dogg. But yeah. this was before he was Snoop, Snoop Dogg, Dogg because yes, we yes. all was trying to make it, you know. And he told me that you know he thought I was dope, and one day when he got his got on his feet and got his stuff together, he was gonna sign me. Yes, I thought he was lying, but he wasn't. Man of and his I, word. He, man of his where I was working with this one producer and we used to work out of his garage but mm -hmm. I was creating a demo you know you get it how you live then yes. you know we didn't have all the access that we would like to have but we did what we had to and I remember going to the studio with him one day and he was like had an attitude with me and I was like what's good yeah. you know and he was like so you signed a record deal with Snoop and I was like what are you talking about I didn't sign no deal yeah he was like well it's on the back of his album I left that studio. I went to my homeboy record store. His name was Aaron. He had a record store on Western and something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you got the uh, Top Dog No Limits CD? Because this is when he went yes, did his merge no limit, with right? No Limit. Mm -hmm. And so he said, be on the lookout for my artist, L.A. Chan, because he calls me L.A. Yes. Chan. Nobody else does. He does. And Goldie Lo, my new artist, be on the lookout for them. And I read that. Now, mind you, I have no contact with Snoop, no yes. number, no nothing. I just used to see him in passing and at events. Yes. I'm at, I'm, I'm at home one day, and this was so random. I'm watching Soul Train, minding my business <laughs> on a Saturday, and I love Soul Train. I always did as I used a kid. To be a Soul Train dancer too. <laughs> But let me tell you my 360 story about Soul Train because, yeah. again, my grandmother, she raised me too. And every Saturday, she would, Chan, it's yes, Soul Train, Soul Train on. on, come watch, because she know I love the show. Yes. And I would be glued to the TV until it went off. And so just this Saturday morning, I think the year was probably 98 or 99, mm -hmm. I'm at home and the phone ring and I'm like, hello. And he was like, can I speak to L.A. Chan? And I was like, like, only well, one person mm -hmm. called me L.A. Chan. And I'm like, well, who is this? And he was like, this dog. And I was like, dog who? He was like, Snoop. I'm like, man, this ain't no motherfucking Snoop. Get off my phone with this shit. <laughs> and he was, he started laughing. Oh and he was God. like, nah, Chan, this is me. He was like, what you doing? And I was like, I'm watching Soul Train. And yeah. he started laughing again. So he was like, um... I want you to come to the doghouse because I got a situation. Yes. And I want you to come hop on a few songs. And I was like, okay, well, where's the doghouse? <laughs> and he was like, well, you never been here? And I was like, no. no. So he was like, I'm going to have somebody call you, get you all the information, and then you come. And that's how history was made. The other two girls, they were working with another producer. Mm -hmm. 
And I went in the studio. I recorded the song with Snoop. Actually, it was me, Snoop, and Cocaine. Mm -hmm. And we did the first song. And he called me back the next day. And he was like, here come another group situation. Mm -hmm. It was like, why these niggas don't want me to stand on my own? Why you always got to put me in the group? You know? But I'm like, you know what? Snoop was like, get your feet wet. So when he said that, I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it. So I happened to know one of the other girls. So it was cool. And yeah. the other girl, she was from Long Beach. And then we got in the studio and I mean, that album was done within 30 days. Wow. The chemistry was great. Yeah. He pulled up beats. But one night what he did do before the album went into play, he had some girls to come up there because mm-hmm. he was trying to figure out who was the other two going to be with me. Yes. And I mean, they was going at it. Like in the booth, like they was fighting for their spot. So oh, it wow. just happened to be them two and myself. And again, we did that album in like 30 days. Hey, well, how did the name come about, Doggy's Angels, which I like? I liked it, but I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. And that's something Snoop came up with. Mm-hmm. And then he had this crazy idea to call our album um, Quiet as Cap. And I said, that ain't gonna fly. I said, because Snoop, why would you name our album Quiet as Kept? We want people to hear it. This is not a secret. And I said, you have to stamp this project Mm -hmm. because you bringing us to the industry. You have to introduce us. Like, you have to stamp this. And he got it. He was like, you know, I get that. Like, Snoop Dogg presents. I'm like, absolutely, because you're introducing us to the world, you know? That's nice. And then he changed it, and it was Snoop Dogg presents Doggy's Angels, Please Believe It. And he named the album. I mean, he did everything an executive was supposed to do. He went far and beyond, and he didn't cut corners with us. He didn't cut corners on the production. Wow. He didn't cut corners on the features. I mean, we had Sugar Free on the album. Oh, I love Sugar Free. We had Free. Nate Dogg on the album. I, I mean, we had Snoop himself yes. on the album. We had the East Siders on the album. East you know Siders, what I'm saying? Yes. So he really went big for us. Yeah. And I'm still grateful for that to this day. Now, on the business aspect, it didn't go great because mm-hmm. it was kind of like a conflict of interest because we never had a manager. Yes. But at the same time, he did what he said he was going to do. do. Okay. And I mean, he showed up when yes. we were on, uh, I think that was Mad TV. He came out, performed with us. We was on MTV. He yes. came out, performed with us. We did Rap City, The Basement. Like, it was very epic. He was really hands on. Yes. So I give him that. Wow. That, and see, and I wouldn't have known none of the the backstory which is the history you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. you, to to know to know a group is to know a group cuz you're like just being the fan you know the on the outside looking in right yes. but then you're the, in the inside giving me the mm-hmm. outsider what the story is yeah well, well, I'm happy that he is a man of his word. That's he a good is. thing, you he know, is. because obviously I'm probably going to have to probably work with him since I'm going to be the next mayor of Inglewood. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, baby, he got Inglewood popping. Yeah, I seen the store. He bought a house over there. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he don't have a his... house. He has a compound. Yeah, no, but he purchased a house too. Well, yeah. yeah okay. uh-huh. I, don't, I didn't know but that. But the compound but yeah. is, and it's so funny because I'm not going to even lie, and I'm going to be very honest. Me and my friends, we have tried to find that compound just so, so we could just like take a picture like that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we found it. Well, you it. can't because the way that it's set up, you. you yeah, they were like, it's behind Randy Donuts. I'm like, it, that's impossible. You know? You, you can't <laughs> just roll up on it. I'm going to tell I you. I know. That. So, <laughs> so even though I haven't asked my my boss, Big U, but I'll be, sometimes I'd be wanting to ask, like, hey, just tell me where it's at so I can take a picture around where it's at. <laughs> so I'm be in front of it. You know what I mean? Because, uh-huh. you know, when you grew up in the 90s, it's like, you know, you think about RBL, you know, you think about mm-hmm. Tupac. Um, I love like RBL you said, about, man, me too. You know, I think about sugar free and like my mom is half Mexican, half Creole. Mm-hmm. So when my family in Pomona, supposedly my cousin dated sugar free when there was in high school. Okay. So we kind of already knew about his rapping career, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And then when we finally got to see it on tape, mm-hmm. he blew my mind. Like, 
my Creole family is crazy and the stuff that come out their mouth when I see, see sugar free flowing I'm like oh my god this is like my cousins talking right. at a family right. party right because I have a lot of Creole in my family too yes, so yes. you know Creole can be kind of crazy yeah no <laughs> serious with all that blood mixed in yeah. come on now think yeah. about it and then plus yeah. the and this is the truth the family we're marrying inside the family yeah. you know so yeah. that is the truth so when you say crazy I'm like yeah boy I can imagine mm-hmm. where's your people from New Orleans Okay, mine's is from New Iberia. Okay. So, you know, Avery Island is mm-hmm. like right next to, door to New Iberia. So Avery Island is where they make the Tabasco sauce. Got so it. my grandma was born on Avery Island. Got and it. then they got pushed out to New Iberia. And then they end up moving to Port Arthur, Texas. So that's where my mom is born. Yes. And then they came to LA. And see from. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, I love them. I, I love him. I didn't know who they That's were. That's why you got a book. <laughs> See, when the book come, I can unfold a lot of things. Yes, you know what I'm yes. saying? Some things I probably won't be able to talk about, but I'm going to be as transparent yeah, as I can uh, yes. be. Because, you know, I'm not in this business <clears throat> to be something I'm not. That's you know right. what I mean? No, you could tell you're a strong woman. You know, you don't have to shoot. And that works nothing. against me. Oh, why? <laughs> why? Because I've learned, and it's sad, that a lot mm-hmm. of men don't like strong women. Wow. It's a fact. You know what I mean? But again, because I have this in, 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 intimidating thing about me. I'm 6'1". Yes. I put on some heels. I'm Shaq. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm Shaq in a dress. <laughs> but... A lot of people are intimidated by that. But then when they get to know me, I walk in the room, it's like, who is she? What does she do? Yes. It's always, it's, it's, it's something. I know But until mean. But those you are have like insecure a, people, though. And I get that. But I'm just saying, like, even as in elementary school, yeah. I was the tallest one, so I'm in the back of the line. You know what I'm saying? I remember but I'm just, that in elementary. You see what I'm saying? But as an adult, <laughs> it's still the same stigma. So... Until people get to know me, yes. they be like, oh my God, you so the down to earth. You're so person, cool, you yes. know? And I am that type of person that I'll give you the shirt off my back. No, I believe you. You know what I mean? I but you just have some people that just aren't used to good people. Yeah. You I know what you. I'm saying? I hear so you. I just say that to say, I just always, I don't try to be me. I just be me. Mm-hmm. And some people be like, you be too humble. I say, well, you don't want the old chin. Yeah. You can ask your boss about the old chin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I just, I just love people. I love me. I love what I do. And when I walk into a room, I like to make that room better. Yes. You know what I mean? I love that. And then that's just who I am. So after the doggy angel stuff, was it the author then the designer? Well, the author hasn't happened yet. The designer. Okay. okay, That's good. Came about because our group broke up Mm -hmm. and the one girl from Long Beach, she was the first one to leave the group. And having a conversation with her, because Snoop took us on tour, we was on the Puff Puff Pass tour, yes. which was huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> I was just telling her, like, why would you leave a group in the height of us becoming a group? Yes. Get you a bigger fan base you know what I'm saying? Spin the block a few times, set yourself up properly, then go solo. Yes. But I think people start believing their own hype because you got to think about it. We young, we get money, we with Snoop, yes. we with the East Siders, we with the Dog Pound, we yes. we it, we in it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I can understand you believe in your hype, but wow. where are they now? Yeah, You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that in a shady way, but... If you were meant to be solo at that time, your career would have taken off Mm -hmm. and you'd probably be on your sophomore album by now. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to be logical when you get these kind of chances in this industry because everybody is not allotted this chance. Yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying? So I agree. Long story short, we got sued by the name you love so much, Doggy's mm-hmm. Angels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's because Charlie's Angels was putting out a movie at the same time. And our distributors, they didn't play about us either because we were on bus stops, billboards. Yes. I mean, they went hard with the promo. Yes. So then you got Charlie's Angels going hard with their promo. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So somebody's like, okay, well, I'm confused what's going on here. And I don't know if this is what happened verbatim because this is probably something I shouldn't even be talking about. But long story short, uh, we had to change the name and 
from that moment, the girl leaving the group, the lawsuit, it's like the chair ain't have no more legs. Yeah. <laughs> we was out of gas, yes. you know? And Snoop, he's an artist. Mm -hmm. So he's still dropping his projects. Yes. And he can't slow down for us. He can't wait for us to get our stuff together. And it was a lot. Yeah. No, I hear And the you. group disbanded. And in that, I became homeless because mm -hmm. I put all my eggs in one Basket. basket and the group was my life because this is what I'm doing now yes. so I, when I'm in it I'm in it I'm yes. giving it 100% I'm gambling on myself mm -hmm. because I'm in it and financially it didn't pan out for me yes. so I was homeless for about I want to say three years like off and on wow. sleeping in the car just going yes. through it so my buddy from Bone Thugs Lazy Bone that's my guy um, he lived in Atlanta mm -hmm. and I called him and I was just like, cause I'm like, what am I going to do? Yes. I said, okay, God, I'm in this situation and I know it's for a reason. So if this is what it's going to be, I'm sleeping in a car, whatever, yes. I'm going to just need you to watch over me until I figure it out. Yes. That was my prayer mm -hmm. every day. And so, uh, lazy was like, well, you can come here and you can stay as long as you want to That's right. and get yourself together. And I think I had like $100 in my pocket. You see how ironic things yes. are? <laughs> and I drove to Atlanta. Wow. And he let me stay there. And so in Atlanta, you know, these houses, there's basements, then yes. there's attics, and then there's the middle, Big middle living quarters. Mm -hmm. So I was like... Can I uh, take up this attic? Because I don't want to see nobody. I don't want to talk to nobody. Yes. I just want to work my thoughts out and see where I need to go from here. Yes. So I wanted to pursue music, but Atlanta is, was very cliquish at the time. So mm -hmm. it wasn't easy to just like, people knew who I was, but that didn't matter. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it, it was just like, everybody had their own set of people who they fucked with. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if I was blackballed or, or what was going on, but this was my reality. Mm -hmm. Ironically, it was a sewing machine in the attic. Mm. So I did what a true player would do. I was like, take me to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Let me utilize this. <laughs> and I went and got some patterns, some fabrics, yes. some scissors, and little things, needles, threads, everything I need. And I stayed in that attic for three months and taught myself how to sew. I started mm -hmm. using the whole house as my muse. I was making stuff for everybody. Yes. And then I was just like, I need to do a clothing line. And I was like, okay, I need a name. I need a name. And then I just said, okay, God, I need a name. I don't want to think about it too hard. Mm -hmm. One day it came to me. Cinderella. You got a Cinderella story. Yes. You know? So I changed the way I spelled Cinderella. I trademarked the name. Yes. And I was like, House of Cinderella. And yes. I don't know what it was, but something was like, okay, it's time to go back to LA. Mm -hmm. I'm still homeless now. Yeah. And I come back to LA, but I, I'm i still Big Chan. Mm -hmm. So I still go to the functions and the events, but now I'm wearing pieces that I made. And now this is sparking a different conversation and yes. people's like, oh, that's hot. Where did you get that? Well, I made it. And so this one guy, he was a stylist. He asked me if um, I could come on set and be a seamstress. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, take my sewing machine and let's do it. And that started everything. I became the go-to girl mm -hmm. for the industry. Wow. Well, I seen that you did outfit for the city girls, right? I did. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So you working with these ladies, how, like, you know. It's really ironic. I don't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's ironic because I've made stuff for Lil' Kim. I've worked with Beyonce. I've made an uh, outfit for her when she did a tribute to Lil' Kim when wow. she did her Halloween tribute to her and she did like seven different looks of yes, Lil' Kim. Yes, I remember that. Two of those so looks were she, mine. Wow. I did Prince for his Welcome to America tour. Um, my work of him hangs in the forum to this day. Wow. Uh, even when he passed, a lot of my work is in all those publications that you see from Time Magazine and Sheesh. all of that. Um, I've worked with Cardi B. 
I've done stuff for Meg the Stallion. Wow. I mean, everybody that's current, I've worked with them in some capacity. Yes. That's inspiring. Yeah. It because is. when you think about, like you said, your Cinderella story is like, you know, just like I said, outside looking in, doggies, angels, rappers, boom. We don't know what happened. It just disappeared. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then found you on social media. And I'm like, this is Chan. Like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> yeah. but you're not rapping, but you're using something and just hearing your story, how you were in the what is it called? Not the attic. The attic. I'm about to say basement. <laughs> the attic. And you found a sewing machine. And my mom, she loves that. She, mm -hmm. I remember her just cutting up newspaper to trace that, mm -hmm. to sew things, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a gift. And here, here we are. Like, you're working with celebrities mm -hmm. for their tours and things of that mm -hmm. nature. And when you talked about Prince, that's like very inspiring. Oh my God. Like very inspiring. That's why, girl, we could be here all day, but I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to save some of this stuff for the book. Yes, yes, but, yes. But, um, SWV, I fucking love those girls. Yes. And I'm the working Jersey on. type of, with the glitter, I was like, oh my gosh. Amazing. And I'm working on tour stuff for them right now, but they don't understand how much of a soundtrack they were to my life growing yes. up as a young girl. And like, I, I think their very first show in LA when they came here, it was at the Avalon and I went mm -hmm. and cut to, it's a full circle moment. Like I can call Coco right now. Yes. I could call Taj or Lili. You know what I'm saying? That's and beautiful. I'm just, you know, I love my life. I don't care. I'm glad everything happened. The good, the bad, yes, and the ugly yes. because God was just shaping me. Yes, he was. For who he wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I can't let nobody make me feel like I'm not worthy or I'm not supposed to be because yes. if it wasn't, it wouldn't be so. Yeah. Who gives you a gift? Who when, gives you yeah. a gift? When you're to down wear, and out. When you're down and out. These stylists would send me a picture and be like, can you make this? And I don't need to have it in front of me, yes. but I can make it. And by the time it gets to the person it needs to be, I don't need to do nothing to it because it fits perfectly. That's a gift. So let, since we're talking about gifts, you know, the show is purpose and passion. So what would be your 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 purpose on earth? I think um, I'm supposed to add some zhuzh to the earth. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. Because I'm very necessary. And it took me almost 50 years to realize yes. this. Because I didn't come from a silver spoon type family. Yes. You know, I didn't come from a wealthy family. Mm -hmm. You know, I came from some struggle shit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And for me to take that struggle and turn it and, and then flip it, it's like you gave me a Kia Coke. Excuse all these yes, references. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I just keep flipping it. You know yes, what I'm saying? making that money. And coming from cut to... Before, my mom did hair for 20 years. She was a staple on Crenshaw Boulevard. Yes. So a lot, everybody used to go there to get their hair done. Yes. So when she didn't have a babysitter, she would take me to cosmetology school with her. So I learned how to do hair. So before I got in the industry, tell you how cold I was, I used to do celebrity hair. Wow. Snoop would see me working on a video that he's shooting. Okay? Yeah. So I'm just telling you how... It don't matter where you come from. Yes. It's your perspective. It's your dream. It's whatever you're filled with, whatever motivates yes. you. And you have to pay attention to those things that you love. Like you said, your passions. Yes. I love fashion. My mom bought me a sewing machine. You know, they had the old school ones where it's like a desk. But mm -hmm. if you lift the top, you could pull the sewing machine yes. up. Yes. It sat in our living room for years. It didn't work. But I think that was God giving me a sign like, you might not mm -hmm. understand this right now, but it's going to catch up to you later. later. And that's how I looked at that. So you just got to pay attention to life. Yeah. It's happening. And if you dreaming, like dream big, you just never know. I love that. And I've been saying that like recently, like when I post pictures for the mayor campaign, I always say dream big, dream big. You got to keep big. dreaming. Like when they say keep swimming, I don't know how to swim, but every day I yeah. swim. In my mind, I'm breaststroking. I'm all of yes. that because I have so much passion about the things that I do. Like mm -hmm. just for instance, you have team players, you have people who grind and you have people who just want to shine. Yes. I'm a grinder. Yeah. I'm a grind it out. 
because I'm not worrying about shining. Yeah. I exist. That's the shine. Yes. I get to wake up every day and, and I'm because breathing. Because of your grind, you shine. Yes. Yeah. But because you have people who like shine. to skip that process. Yes. And then they get the rewards off of other people's mm-hmm. blood, Back. sweat, mm-hmm. and tears. You know what I'm saying? That ain't me. Yeah. Well, I know it's not you. That you, ain't me. You, you like you've always, <laughs> like I said, I've like I said, I've known you. To say, as a fan, like when I first met you face to face, you were this strong, tall woman, and you didn't look very friendly. But I didn't care, you know. I was just like, "Hi, my name is Raina. I'm the one that's gonna do this and that." And you're like, "Okay, okay, okay." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, she's so sweet." But you look the exterior looks so yeah, hard. the exterior because I've been through a lot. Yes, but, I'm just learning to walk but, in the room and smile. Right, me too. You know, at first because <laughs> you know I was wearing my struggle. Yeah, yeah, I was wearing my struggle yes. because uh-huh. I had been through so much. Yes, you know, I've been through a lot. Yes. So before we, we, you know, we close the show, is there anything that you want to share to inspire our viewers? Yes, man. You got to keep swimming. Even if you don't know how, just wear your life jacket. That's your God. That's what you believe in. Yes. When you wake up every day, you got to, you got to tell yourself you the shit. You can't wait for nobody to validate you. That's Validation right. is for parking. That's something you have to understand. We're living in a social media type world. So we see things we want to be that, or we see other people life. We want to glorify it. But all you got to do is tap into you, make you the focus. You got to make you the shit. And That's you can right. do it because we got everything we need to do yes. it. Physically, you might not have the money, but it's money out there. To go get it. Yeah. It's money it out happen. there. You know, you have resources. You just have to tap in. Yes. Man, Chan, thank you so much for just blessing our show on Purpose and Passion. Huge shout out to Lux Media Studios and shout LA City Club. Media. <laughs> LA City Club and this beautiful lady right here because she just DM me and I promise you I couldn't put a face with the 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 uh the moment and all yes. of that but I just said let me see what this sister is talking about yes and come sit here y'all vote for her mayor her in usher her in thank you and let's see what she got because we here so she got some. So, yes, yeah, yes, let's go. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, viewers, I hope you enjoyed this interview. I did. Very inspiring. I know if we had extra hours, we would be here literally like we're in the living room table talking, chopping it up with even more than what we were talking today. But until then, we're going to try to get a part two when she gets this okay. book. Yeah, and the book is coming. It's called Sorry It Took So Long. So. <laughs> I like it. I ain't going to hold y'all up. It's coming. And my website is being um, revamped. It's also House of Cinderella. And if you want to find out more about me, I'm on Instagram at House of Cinderella. I spell Cinderella, C-Y-N-D-A-R-E-L-L-A. And thank you to Passion and Purpose. Thank you, (laughs) y'all. Have a blessed day. Until next time. Peace. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radicals, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.SalvationNutra.com.